You don't have to buy a bottled chicken rub to get great tasting chicken at home. Today we're sharing with you our favorite chicken rub recipe and we'll show you exactly how to make it step by step. I'm David Gafford with The Barbecue Lab, and when I first started cooking barbecue, I used bottled rubs almost exclusively. I'd buy them from my local hardware store, the grocery, and just about anywhere I saw one on the shelf, I'd need to buy it and try it out. Now, it wasn't until I started doing some larger cooks for friends and family that I branched out and started making my own rubs. But once I did, I fell in love with the process of testing and perfecting barbecue rubs. Now today's recipe is a part of that testing as I'm always looking for the blend I like the best for different barbecue meats. Now for a chicken rub, I don't want it to be too salty. You can over salt a chicken pretty easily if you're not aware of the salt content in your rub. So this rub is right around 25% salt, which means you can put on a pretty heavy coat. Now I use this on whole chickens, chicken halves, quarters, thighs, breasts, legs, and wings, so it's my go-to chicken rub when we're cooking for ourselves, friends, and family. Now I'm going to assemble a single batch today, which will season about six to eight chicken breasts or a couple of whole chickens if you put it on pretty heavy. Now I keep old shakers around from other rubs that I've used, so usually I'll build this straight into an old shaker bottle. Now I start with a tablespoon of regular table salt. Yes, that's table salt and not kosher salt. There's a definitive size difference and they act differently in a rub. You can make this with kosher salt, but since chicken isn't a long cook that attracts a bark like brisket, table salt works just fine. Next, I'll add a half a tablespoon of seasoned salt. Now there's a lot of chatter out there about this being one of the not so secret secrets of Texas barbecue, so give this a try. Next up, we're gonna add one tablespoon of freshly cracked black pepper. I think cracking it fresh is important because it adds more spice to it and it just gives a fresher taste. So I like to use the pepper cannon to grind up some peppercorns right into the base of the unit and then measure that out into the rub. If you'd like to get your hands on a pepper cannon, I'll put a link to this down below as well. So make sure you check in the description for any of the things that you might need to pull this together. Now next, it's a tablespoon of smoked paprika. I'll put links down in the description below for any of the ingredients you might need in order to put this together. And I'll have smoked paprika and all the other things that might not be in your pantry. Now I like the addition of some smoky flavor here, but you could go with Hungarian or sweet paprika and change the flavor profile. Now two teaspoons of chili powder is next, and I'm just using regular old chili powder today. I like to use chipotle or dark chili powder sometimes, but if the kids are eating with us, I'll keep it the regular variety so that they'll actually eat dinner. Next is two teaspoons of granulated garlic. The granulated variety is very different from garlic powder, and you can see the difference when you compare them side by side. You could substitute the powder, but I like the granulated much more. Now next, it's one and a half teaspoons of oregano. I personally love Mexican oregano, but we're out at the moment, so regular old oregano will work today. Next, it's one teaspoon of ground cumin. I personally love cumin, and I put it in everything, but just one teaspoon today. And to finish things up, we'll put in one quarter teaspoon of cayenne pepper. Now you might be asking, what kind of sissy rub only has one quarter teaspoon of cayenne pepper? Well, I've tested this rub on lots of people and the kids have said that anything more than a quarter teaspoon made it too spicy. Now granted, my kids have an aversion to spicy things, so I'm giving you the recipe that kids will put up with. Now if your crowd likes spice, I like to put in a whole teaspoon myself, but that's still too spicy for Melissa. Now if you're cooking for the gang who's coming over for a football game, throw two teaspoons of cayenne pepper in there and they'll remember this rub as a spicy rub but for the overall recipe that anyone will enjoy, it's just one quarter teaspoon of the spicy stuff. And that's it. It's not a complicated rub, but it's amazing on chicken. I use it all the time and I hope that you give it a try. 
Remember, if you need any of these ingredients, just check the description below and I'll have links there for the main ingredients and a few ideas of how you can change it up and make it your own. I'll even put a link where you can buy your own shaker bottles if you're looking for those. I know that I use those around here all the time and I'll have a link down there for that as well. And here's an extra tip. If you need to get your spices into your shaker, just grab a piece of paper, make a funnel, and it's no spill from mixing bowl to spice shaker bottle. Now, if you give this recipe a go, make sure to come back and leave us a comment on how it went. We love it when we hear that you guys are trying this at home, since it's our mission to help you get outside and cook. Now, if you wanna scale this recipe, head on over to thebarbecuelab.com where you can print this recipe and scale it right on the page to a larger batch if you want. Now, if outdoor cooking is your thing, make sure that you hit that subscribe button before you go because that's what we do here on this channel. And I can't wait to see you next time right here on The Barbecue Lab.